All right, we got to talk some Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, uh, whichever one you want to talk about. It's going to kind of go together. And really, I wanted to talk about just what happened in this game altogether. I mean, anytime you see numbers as outrageous as the numbers you see in this football game, it always is going to it's going to raise uh, some questions right away, right? I mean, just looking at the passing and receiving yardage here, obviously the two things to look at, Joe Burrow, uh 446 yards four touchdowns no interceptions on just 39 attempts too so it was you know over 10 yards per attempt while throwing 39 times that's really difficult to do the flip side of course jamar chase 266 receiving yards were his uh and three touchdowns were his 11 receptions uh even the other you know players still had some good games it's not like it was just the jamar chase as well so what happened how did this go wrong for kansas city and how did this go so right for cincinnati well let's jump into the film and one thing that i keep hearing people talk about is why in the world did you leave jamar chase one-on-one -on -one so frequently and usually that's you know those kind of questions when you go back and watch tape you can actually understand why that stuff happened or even that it didn't maybe necessarily happen as much as people think it did because a lot of chase's yards did actually come uh, or at least a good chunk of them came against like a cover two zone this is what uh kansas city was doing a lot of early on which quite frankly i i feel very strongly about this the chiefs aren't great at zone coverage they should play man as much as possible they're much better at man when they try and play this cover two zone it's just not very good on this play this is going to be jamar chase uh, who's going to get open on this play. It's a simple zone buster designed to beat zone coverage. Basically, you have the receiver who's lined up, who whose route you don't see on the screen is running a go route. That'll push the corner sort of further deep. Uh, and then you can have Jamar Chase with the corner kind of out of position. He runs a little bit into that gap in coverage, can get open, can gain some yards. Watch, right when this play begins, you see Joe Burrow look up and you see how well this play is working. I mean, he throws it to Jamar Chase, who was just wide open. So that was the first part, right? You know, good job by Burrow of running the offense, but that was an easy play to throw to, uh, which I do kind of think like, okay, you know, good job by Zach Taylor to scheme it open for sure. But still, you got to be better than that. And you got to find a way to, uh, you know, you got to be better at uh, covering Jamar Chase and just in zone coverage in general, being more aggressive, being more aware of the concepts that can beat you. There's one other interesting thing about this play. You know, you got a free first down. Okay, whatever. Jamar Chase is going to score a touchdown on this. No, I am not kidding. No, I am not making a joke. Somehow Jamar Chase, if paused it right here, is going to get into the end zone on this play. Watch how he just, I mean, this is just completely absurd. I, I can't believe that he found a way to get all the way into the end zone. This is what he did in college, and it's part of why I was a little bit worried about him going into the NFL. It's like, okay, all this crazy stuff he's doing in college, it's not going to work in the NFL. Apparently, it just works in the NFL also, which is just baffling to me how well this has worked out but still a uh, great job by joe burrow and great job by jamar chase on this play so that was an element and also like even stuff like this that would happen where what you're going to see is that this is cover two zone and it's a similar concept it's basically the same concept although now jamar chase is the plus receiver as in the receiver who's closest to the sideline so it's the same thing and watch what Kansas City is going to do now, right? They're going to learn from their mistakes that they got burned from the first time. Burrow takes the snap and you see, okay, Kansas City players, they're ready for the route over the middle. They're paying attention. One slight issue, uh, someone still has to cover the plus receiver. You can't both now go over to the slot guy. You have to make sure you know which one is going where. And I can't believe there wasn't any conversation in the Kansas City sideline of like, hey, uh, next time, you know, usually it's the linebacker over the middle who covers this guy. Uh, you know, next time we make sure we get who's going to be covering who. Uh, they did not really do that. As you see, great read from Burrow. I think that should be mentioned because he got it there the second it was open, which is not easy to do. And of course, that breakaway speed from Jamar Chase. So good stuff all around by uh, by Cincinnati. There's no denying that. But also like, okay, I don't know how often you're going to get these breaks to go your way. Granted, it hasn't been zero times, right? Teams do make mistakes and good football teams take advantage of opponents' mistakes as well. So sometimes I think we overthink this stuff and say, eh, yeah, that was good, but it was because Kansas City made a mistake. Well, throughout the course of a football game, even against a good team, against a good defense, you're going to still see those mistakes. It certainly happened in this one and they took advantage. And also to talk about some of these like one-on-one -on -one matchup go route things, what's fascinating about Jamar Chase, and again, 
Uh, I don't want to say like I was down on Jamar Chase or anything coming into the, you know, uh, coming into the season, but I certainly wasn't expecting this kind of production, especially not right away. One of my concerns with Chase was, okay, a lot of what he did in college was he didn't get separation necessarily, but made c great contested catches. But in the NFL, when corners can play the ball so effectively, how well will you be able to do that? And how efficient will you be able to do that? Or will you have to kind of learn new tricks, so to speak? Uh, no, apparently he can do that just as well as he did in college. So again, uh, I was wrong about that. I projected that incorrectly. Because on this play, it's set up as though it's going to be cover two, but it's a disguise. It's actually going to be a single safety deep coverage of a cover three type. And Jamar Chase is basically going to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a corner. Watch how when Burrow takes the snap, you are going to notice that this, you know, right now when Burrow's making this throw, it's not like it's wide open by any means. It's not like Burrow saying, oh, okay, great, Jamar Chase is open, let me hit him. Like, no, there's not any separation. Burrow just trusts his guy. This is just, I believe that my guy can make a play. And in fairness, this is what Burrow does, you know, a lot. This is what Burrow does to not just Chase, but the other guys, is he gives his receiver opportunities. And as you see, Burrow's going to make, make a great throw, so I'm not discrediting him, and a great catch from Jamar Chase. So, it's not like I'm saying, oh, well, all Burrow does is throw it up to his receiver. Like, no, Burrow saw a small window where if he hit it, Chase would have a really good chance of catching it. He can hit those small windows, and Chase can make those catches. So it works together, and that's kind of the great blend. I've always kind of said, listen, if you're a quarterback who's accurate and has a big arm, it makes your decision-making look better. I mean, you know, if Baker Mayfield makes that throw, he probably doesn't make that throw as well, and it probably doesn't end up getting, uh, you know, caught for a— uh, a big completion, but instead maybe it's incomplete or intercepted or something just because like arm talent matters. Also, I don't know why I'm taking a shot at Baker Mayfield, but I just mean like some like, you know, decent quarterback uh, probably doesn't do as well of a job as uh, Burrow does there. And also like something like this, what's going to happen is that it's a similar thing. Again, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Jamar Chase. And again, watch what's going to happen here. Look, Burrow's going to make this throw and just, you know, or take the snap, I mean, and then make the throw. And you see that, again, not really any separation whatsoever right here. I mean, this is not like this is, oh, this is going to work for sure. Like, no. And it's kind of amazing, too, where you typically think, okay, who's a great jump ball receiver? Like, who's the first guy you think about? For me, one of those guys is like Mike Evans, who, okay, he's 6'5", he goes up, he makes the play. That makes some sense. Like, Jamar Chase isn't that tall either. He just, he, he just finds a way. Look at him and look at how he goes up and makes that play. And he can just do this stuff so consistently. He's just kind of one of those guys. You just, you can't leave one-on-one. -on -one. And what's amazing about it too, though, is uh, honestly, it's, it reminds me a little bit of like a Calvin Johnson. I'm not saying that he's Calvin Johnson, but just in the way that like, no matter how little separation there is, he just seemingly finds a way to make the grab. Maybe like a DeAndre Hopkins is the better example of it. But like, it's it just, it's truly remarkable and really good stuff from Jamar Chase. So yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.